gravitation problem says a ball is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second from an initial height of 80 feet. Part A says find the position function giving the height s as a function of time. Also, for negative 32 feet per second squared is the acceleration due to gravity. So we've done some of these projectile motion problems before, uh, but we've never had to completely do it by scratch. Remember we had that equation that was like negative 16 t squared plus the, velocity, the initial velocity times t plus the initial height. Well, where that comes from is this idea right here. If we start with the acceleration due to gravity, A of T is equal to negative 32. And we're trying to get back to the position function. We're going to take the antiderivative. Okay, so V of T is going to be negative 32T plus C. We've got to figure out what that plus C is before we can do it again. So our initial condition that they give us is that the initial velocity is 64 feet per second. So that means initial always means that time equals zero. So 64 is equal to negative 32 times zero plus C. That means that C is 64. So we've got V of T is equal to negative 32T plus 64. So we use that first initial condition that they gave us. Now, um, that's just a really easy way to do it, to give us an initial velocity when time equals zero. They could give you, they could say when the velocity three seconds after throwing the ball is blah, blah, blah. Um, then you would plug in 3 for t and solve for c. But typically they give you the initial, okay, uh, which makes it pretty easy. But velocity is not what we want. We want position function, so we need to take the antiderivative again. So remember, put position, velocity, acceleration. You can go backwards, acceleration, velocity, position. When we antidifferentiate here, we've got negative 32t squared over 2 plus 64t plus another c. They tell us that the initial height is 80 feet. So 80 is equal to negative 32 over 2 is negative 16 times 0 squared plus 64 times 0 plus c. Again, it's really easy when the time is 0 because those uh, variables factor out. So we end up finding out that our position function is equal to negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 80. Okay. That's where, as I mentioned before, when we did these problems a while back, they told us that the general position formula was this, uh, negative 16t squared plus v sub 0t plus s sub 0 the initial velocity, the initial position. That's what they told us, but we just did this problem without having to know that quote-unquote formula. We were just given those initial conditions using anti-differentiation. We were able to figure it out. Um, and then remember when it was in meters instead of feet, it was negative uh, 4.9 because the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared is negative 9.8. Um, so, uh, one more thing about this, I've seen problems, uh, and I think you're getting ready to do one that starts with the acceleration due to gravity like on the moon, so it just starts with a different number there, um, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, uh, then they want to say answer the question, when does the ball hit the ground? So when means we're looking for a time, if it hits the ground, what's true about its position? It's zero. So we set our position function equal to zero. Uh, let's see here. Are these all divisible by 16? I know 64 is. Is it 80? Yeah, it's five. Okay. So we're going to uh, factor out the negative 16. So that gives us t squared minus 4t minus 5.
So that factors into t minus 5 and t plus 1. So we get 5 seconds and negative 1 second. We can throw out the negative 1 because we can't have negative time. And it makes sense that one of our times is negative because if you think about this scenario, it said that it started at an initial height of 80. So um, we're going to go up from there and then we're going to hit the ground over here. So it makes sense that the other part of our parabola intersects on the negative side. Uh, so after five seconds, is when the ball hits the ground. Yeah. You should always make sure that you check your units. One of them, number 49, is about tree growth. So they give you the growth rate, uh, that function, and they ask you for the height. So if you have the rate of the growth, then the antiderivative of that would give you the height function. Uh, similarly, number 50 is population growth. So they give you a rate. If you're trying to find the population, you need to take the antiderivative. Okay. Um, 57 is an example. I told you that the, uh, talked about the moon. Talked about the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is negative 1.6 meters. And they write it really weird per second per second. Okay. That's just a reflection of it's the change in the rate of change. So it just has two units of time. It's the same as per second squared. Okay. Uh, sometimes they just like to write it like that. 51 through 55 are vertical motion, projectile motion problems like we just did. And 61 through 65 take us back to particle motion a little bit. So it's a good reminder of our particle motion problems. We can now start going backwards with those.